Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Success with Flowell show. I'm your host, Taylor Stoll, founder and CEO of Flowell. We're so glad that you decided to spend a little bit of time with us learning more about the health coaching industry. Today, we have one of the Flowell mentors, Deepak Saini out of Calgary, Canada. Welcome, Deepak. We're excited to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Our pleasure. So for all our listeners at home, Deepak is a an ICF ACC certified coach, as well as a board certified health coach, master primal health coach, and certified by the Human Potential Institute. He focuses on helping people reverse the effects of aging and has his own private practice, which he's grown over the last several years. And so we're going to dig into some of the secrets and some of the tactics that he's used to find success as a health coach. So Deepak, while we're so excited to hear about where you are now, everyone wants to hear about where you started. So give us the breakdown. How did you find your passion and get started as a health coach? Absolutely. I, I won't get into my big backstory here, but I was essentially struggled with health challenges my entire life. In 2014, it really came to a head. I hurt my back so bad I couldn't pick up my youngest daughter. The Western medical system kind of didn't serve me, so I had to find alternative means. I ended up healing healing my back, uh, losing 100 pounds, and clearing up my autoimmune condition. And that was the turning point for me. Once people started asking me how I did it, uh, so health coaching, not my first career. I was a CPA by profession for my first career. But when people started asking me and I started mentoring and guiding them, I realized that I really had that passion for it. I wanted to help other people so they didn't have to suffer like I did. So I started what we, you know, maybe some of you out there, you know, are doing as side hustles. I did that for a few years. Uh, but in 2018, I started uh, doing this full time. So, yeah, and, and I, I'm never turning back, I'm never going back to corporate world. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah, it's it's definitely freeing to be able to control your own schedule and work with the clients I'm sure that you want to work with. But Absolutely. I'm sure that there were challenges when you jumped ship and kind of went headfirst on on your own business in 2018. Can you tell us about some of the major challenges that you feel like you faced and overcame? Absolutely. And, and just to be perfectly clear, there's still challenges. As you grow, as you get bigger, as you learn more, you just get different challenges. And and, and, they're, and sometimes they're bigger and, and depending on where your stage at life, uh, stage of your business life, for sure. But yeah, honestly... Um, you know, th being, you know, uh, a professional, a CPA in my case, you know, I thought I knew and, and having a good foundation in health and doing a lot of my own research, and research I thought I knew how to run a business. Um, I had my own business prior, just like, a, again, a little side thing, um, but I always worked in a corporation uh, for my entire career. So, you know, there's a lot of supports there and, and things like that. So it's not an easy thing to jump you know, out on your own or even starting a side hustle uh, to begin with. Um, I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I made, I made so many mistakes early on. I wasted money on things that actually didn't matter, that did not move the dial uh, in my business whatsoever. Uh, I'll just share one example. I, you know, I thought like, oh, getting branded t-shirts and just walking around and wearing them would be like a great advertising tool. That was like the dumbest thing I ever did. It's like, um, you know, if you have a gym or some physical location, okay, that makes sense. Like have your staff wear them and, you know, all on brand, but like nobody cares. Nobody looks at your t-shirts. So now I just like, you know, I've got 10 of them printed. Uh, they're just like around the house shirts now. Like, and I, cause I've changed my, I've changed my branding. I changed my company name, the whole deal. They're just absolutely useless. So I was like, that was a waste of money and, and countless other examples. Uh, and honestly, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I need my perfect website uh, before I can get started. And, and they just mur in that, uh, the minutia of not actually starting their business because they're waiting for the website. You don't even need a website. Just get out there, talk to people, let people know what you're doing. And yeah, you do need a website at, at one point, but don't worry about that at the beginning. And I, the list could go on and on. But uh, yeah, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I made a ton of mistakes. And hey, uh, hey, I'm still making mistakes. They're just different mistakes and at a grander scale. That's all. Yeah, no, I totally agree with the thinking that the minute details are the most important thing. When at the end of the day, the most important thing in starting is just talking to people, understanding the problems that you're going to be solving for them, understanding how they talk about their problems. And in the conversations that you had in the beginning, do you feel like, you know, what are some of the lessons you learned with your the early folks that you talked to uh, in how to approach folks as a new health coach? Yeah, absolutely. Like I wouldn't say you shouldn't do this, but I started with 
coworkers, friends and family and that sort of thing. And then, you know, that kind of starting got a foundation. That was great. A little bit of income in the door, you know, get a few early testimonials. That That's all, all good. But that dries up pretty quick. And yeah, you get a few referrals from those people, but that dries up pretty quick. So you have to become comfortable with going outside your comfort zone, going to networking events, getting out there on social media or whatever the, you know, the, works for you in your local place or internationally and just getting out there. You can't bank on the people that know you from whatever you did before. And and still to this day, there's people like, they just don't get it. Like, I thought you were an accountant. I'm like, well, yeah, I was, but I'm not anymore. And I haven't been for many years, but you know, so you just have to get out there and, and meet people, go to networking events and just get yourself out there. And, and honestly, get over yourself about the fear of rejection. You will be rejected. People will say no more times than they will say yes. Like, like 99 to one. So you, if, if you're someone who struggles with that, like you got to get over that for sure. Now I, I remember, let me share this, you know, just making uh, cold calls even uh, for, you know, trying to get in. And I think we maybe will talk, touch on this uh, a little bit later, you know, trying to get in with, uh, uh, you know, clinics, you know, uh, medical offices or chiropractors, or whatever the case may be. And just like cold calling these, I would literally have to like, cause I'm, I'm not a, I'm, you know, people are surprised like, oh, you're so outgoing. You do all these videos on YouTube and blah, blah, blah. And all this is like, yeah, because I've kind of built this skill and I can kind of get myself to do it. But I'm an introvert by nature. I'd rather just kind of be by myself and do my own thing. So I'd have to literally like, psych myself up to make that first call. And then, okay, then it, oh, the second one's a little easier. And then the third one, and then next thing you know, you've made 40 calls. Uh, and you're getting, you know, again, 39 rejections out of those 40. But, you know, it's not natural for me, but so, but you can do it. It's a skill that can be learned for sure. Yeah. 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 I totally hear you on the, the rejections. It's just a part of the game and you have to fail forward. You have to take the rejection. Absolutely. Understand exactly what it is that is causing the rejection and look at it from a scientific point of view, right? Like how can I improve myself? How do I tone my craft? such that I'm going to improve that conversion rate of 99 to one. Uh, Cause you know, and if, if that, if you're listening and your conversion rate is 99 to one, come talk to us. We'll get that thing a lot better as a flow. Well coach, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you are getting at least like 10 to one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. One, one thing that reminds me of that as well is like, it's really important to understand what you do yourself. Yeah. You should be able to explain to someone what you can do in 30 seconds. Yep. If you can't and people don't understand, your message is not clear. And that's something I certainly learned even in the last year. You know, again, I back to what I said earlier, as you get bigger, as you get more successful, and maybe your audience changes or you're, or you're targeting different people, you have to fine tune all the time. I'm not doing the same program I did, uh, you know, seven years, six years ago. Uh, my messaging has changed in the last year and you got to be succinct with it. So if you can't explain, you know, to your mom or your best friend, what you do in 30 seconds, nobody else, no stranger is going to understand what you say, what, what, what you do either. So that's, you know, a lesson to be learned for sure as well. Yeah, definitely. So I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about your rise. So you talked about how you started with friends and family, you got those testimonials, but it dried up. So now you're running your own business. You do this, you have a family. So what do you, what was the secret for you in terms of getting clients once that that well of friendlies dried up for you? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, and, and there's a million different ways you can promote. Uh, you know, you can run ads, and you know, you can you know drive organic traffic. You you know can just get out on social and do things organically. There, there's a million and one ways. Uh, but for me, it's again, it goes back to like you just need to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, your friends, your family, your old coworkers, whatever, like these people, you already have relationships, your your warm leads, so to speak. That's comfortable. Talking to strangers or cold leads and however you find them, totally different, you know, ballgame. So, you know, you just have to be able to get more comfortable with that. And, and as you get more comfortable with that, uh, you know, introverted or not, and, you know, again, fine tuning your message, fine tuning how you talk on the phone or in person. Uh, and I don't want to call it salesy, but like there is some salesmanship to some of these conversations. You know, as you get better and better at that, these conversations become easier and then your conversions or, you know, signing up new clients or at least having initial conversations with people will increase for sure. Yeah. 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 I think it's just reps, right? So for you, it's ab- absolutely reps. We're- just think of it as going to the gym, going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is just, and like, you know, as a coach, you recognize if a client comes to you and says, all right, I want to lose 20 pounds. 
it's not going to happen overnight. And it's going to certainly take, um, you know, time and failure and the stress and struggle of, of, uh, of doing the work. And so it's the same as a coach who is building a business, honestly, any person who is building a business, it's just, you got to do the work. It's going to be uncomfortable, but that's okay. Cause that's just how, yeah. So Absolutely. for you with those lead, getting those leads, how, where do they come from? Did you go to the grocery store and just talk to people? Oh, like, man, I've, I've done, I've done all sorts of manner of things to try, you know, you know, early on, it was like, you know, that old adage, you know, throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. I've done all these dumb things. So like le learn from me and, and the other mentors and, and not saying they can't work. It's just, they didn't work for me. And, and part of that is a number of things like the messaging wasn't right. Uh, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier, like you need to really understand I've gone and put flyers on mailboxes. I've gone to community, you know, health food stores and, you know, grocery stores and, or anywhere there was a bulletin board and like put up cards or like a poster, you know, all that sort of thing. Gone to networking events locally done. I've run advert, uh, you know, um, Facebook ads, the, the whole the whole deal and and, and 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 much more I've tried so many things uh, promotions and referral things and things on social like you know and there's a room for all of them it just like what really resonates with you and what's gonna work for your goals I guess so um, yeah so what was the secret for you what did you find as the, the marketing method to get clients that you feel is the sustainable one for your business? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to answer this kind of in two ways. I'm right at almost an inflection point myself right now. Uh, so what was the biggest driver for me as far as really, really up leveling, uh, in the last, uh, year or so I'd say would be what I'll call the joint venture model. Uh, so basically having working with partners who have similar audiences, uh, or you know, of demographics and, and such, and having them uh, drive traffic to me, and, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, and then, of course, I have to reciprocate. And then usually you're paying some sort of commission. So instead of paying for ads, uh, which I've never had, I've had some success, but not much. And I'm, I'm by no means an ads you know, expert. But, you know, I'm only paying if people actually sign up. So people are driving, my partners are driving free traffic to my workshop or whatever the case may be. For my case, it's workshops um, where then I you know, it's a sales event. I try and convert them, and only if they sign up, then do I pay a commission. So I'm only I'm I'm guarant I'm guaranteeing sales for any expense going out. So that's what's worked for me right now. So again, and I said a moment ago, I'm at an inflection point. I'm getting to the point, or maybe after another year from now, that's not going to work for me anymore because the problem with doing that is you have to reciprocate to your partners as well. So honestly, the best way is you got to build your own list. You need a lead magnet of some sort, whatever that looks like. It could be a five-day challenge, could be a guide, could be a quiz. There's a million things. Build your own list. And I'm, I found I'm just in the middle of a launch. Uh, as, the, as we're recording this right now, I'm just at, at the tail end of a current launch. And I'm finding I'm getting actually more people coming from my own list because I've built my list up over the last, uh, let's call it a year again. So my main focus now is building my list even bigger and then again, you don't have to pay commissions. You know, if you have an engage, if you engage your audience, you give them valuable content and that's key, valuable. There's a lot of, don't do dumb stuff people to your audience, trust me. And you engage them. Then when you have something new, some small portion, it's a numbers game. At the end of the day, it's a numbers game. Some small portion will resonate with you and they'll want to buy your stuff. Yep. That's how it works, right? You, uh, yeah. Yeah, this, it's super simple numbers. And when we say numbers game, right, like just so for the folks who are listening that maybe don't know some numbers, let's just toss out some some ones. So it's like if you have 10,000 people and you have a thousand dollar offer and one percent of people buy, right, that's 100 people who buy a thousand dollar offer. Let's just say that the window to buy is seven days. That means in one week you made a hundred thousand dollars. That's how it works. And so I can definitely understand how building your list and ensuring that you're engaging with them and nurturing them, that is how you win in this business. And so Deepak, when you say that, you know, you want to, you want to uh, deliver value, right? And don't do the silly stuff. Can you help me and our audience understand, you know, what do you do to deliver the value and what have you learned is the silly arbiter or, uh, you know, yeah, great question, Taylor. Um, so I guess I'll start with the deliver the value. So number one, be consistent, right? So this is who you are, and it goes back to your messaging and who you are and who you serve, right? You have to really have that dialed in. 
and you can't be everything to everyone. Like honestly, what I do, literally, probably almost everyone, if they're really thinking about it, could use my services. But the point is most people aren't even aware. They're not even that headspace to like think about what I do. So that's totally fine. But back to, you know, your messaging and who your audience is needs to be really dialed in. And then be consistent with that. Like it can't frustrate an audience more when you're like, oh, wait, I thought you did you did this and now you're doing this and what's going on. And if you're going to use the joint venture model, it's got to be something that it's aligned. You know, it's like, oh, you're a health coach. And like, oh, now you're promoting somebody else who does, I don't know, I'll make something up like uh, cigarettes. I mean, that's kind of an extreme example. No one would do that, right? But it's like, it's it's off brand. It doesn't make sense. And now you're going to turn people off. So, to you know, to build that, you know, credibility you got to be consistent people have to understand whatever it is maybe it's just once a week maybe it's just a once a month maybe it's every day but be consistent with it and just be on brand and and provide value and don't you know be doing or saying controversial or dumping no, i'm not saying don't be you absolutely be you speak your truth but maybe you might want to stay away from controversial things or making your opinion you know you as an entrepreneur or even a solopreneur you know there's no you and your business. They are the same. So just a bit of advice uh, there. And then as far as doing, uh, you know, uh, silly thing, I guess I kind of touched on, on on both, you know, just, yeah, be consistent. And I see this with new coaches all the time. And some of them are my friends too. You know, it's like they go really hard and they, they do, you know, whatever, whatever your platform is five days in a row, six days in a row, and then they burn themselves out. And like, I don't know what to come up with now, or I have some ideas, but I'm busy. It's like, that's not how you approach it. You got to approach it professionally. So again, not saying I'm doing the best job or I even have it dialed in. I'll just share, you know, with with budding some budding coaches and newer coaches. I in the last, I guess, only six months, no, a little bit, long, seven eight months ago now, I committed to getting really dialed in on my social media, and I'm like, I don't like doing that. I don't like posting and spending an hour or any other programs. And I think I'm just like, it's a better use of my time. Again, I have a family and all this stuff and I want to do bigger, big things. It's better use of my time to hire someone and she just makes all my social media posts for me. She sends me a couple files, one for emails and one for social media. I review them. That takes me maybe half an hour and then, yep, it's all good. I'll make changes if I need to. And then it's done. It just happens for the rest of the month. She does a whole month. She schedules them out and it takes me half an hour to do all my social media. <clears throat> I might do extra if something comes up and that's on my own. I don't have that person do it. Uh, but so, you know, think about it professionally. But the bigger point is be consistent. If it's only once a month, give damn good value that once a month. If it's even if it's every day, make sure it's on brand and provides value. But obviously it can be less because you have a little bit more leeway, right? The more frequent you do it. So. Yeah, no, I think that that's a great a great way to, to do it and to understand, all right, what are the things that I don't love to do that I feel like are not, a, you know, a great use of my time and then outsourcing that and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I'm at the point now, maybe, maybe not, hopefully by next year, early next year, uh, like I said, I've already outsourced the social media and I already have contractors for certain things that I don't want to do, like web design and maintenance of that sort of thing. Again, it's not my zone of genius. I work with coaching people. That's, that's, Right. Or, but I'm probably at the point, but I still do all my own admin. I still do my own accounting. Again, I'm an accountant, but I'm at the point probably next year where it's like I need either a VA or something like that to offload some of that admin stuff. So I can focus on, again, what I'm the best at. And then, of course, I want to also have you know more uh, flexibility and uh, leisure time and spend more time with my kids and stuff like that. Even if, even if it's just half an hour extra a day or an hour extra a day. Hey, that all adds up. It does add up. It absolutely does. Yeah. And I I guess for you, when did you know it was time to outsource? I guess this was probably September, October of last year. So not not quite a year ago. Uh, I knew I needed to up level. I knew I needed to take my game to the next level. Part of that was being more consistent on social media and part of it and, and building my list and uh and in doing list building activities and in, and be more consistent with engaging i was hit or miss with my email list and uh, and actually you know quite frankly here's a tip don't do this people if you have a list of any sort don't leave it dormant i actually stopped because i changed tactics uh and that's part of the growing pains and the growing process as well i stopped engaging my list for almost a year and then when i came back it's like no this is important this is probably the most uh, important thing one can do is is build your own list and that's different than building connections on social media you don't control your social media 
uh, accounts. You control your own list. So you got to build your own list. Uh, and then I came back and started to be more consistent and like, you know, kind of like, hey, sorry, I've been away, but this is what I'm doing now. I made a bit of a change and I lost probably 25% of my list in like a few weeks. Cause they're like, who the hell are you? We forgot about you. What's going on. You're doing something slightly different now, et cetera. And I've subsequently built it back, you know, and in greater. So there you go. Don't do that. Yeah. That, that's really important. It's great. Yeah. Great advice. So own your, own your audience. People don't think that your followers can, can never go away because Instagram or, you know, meta, Mark Zuckerberg will take that away with at the snap of his fingers. I mean, not to say that it's Mark Zuckerberg, but it happens. I know it's, it's, it's some great. It it, ha it, ha it happens a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah, like tens of thousands of people, years of hard work gone in a day. And so like Deepak saying, the way to do it is to have a lead magnet, which is just a, something that delivers value. And all it is is they, in exchange for that value, somebody gives you their email address. Now, all of a sudden, unless they change their email address, you've got a point of contact and a channel to access that person indefinitely. So, to yeah, but you have, you have to nurture them. You can't do nothing. And, <laughs> once right. You get so, and that's like a big lesson that, yeah, I've definitely learned as well is, you know, whatever the value is that you provide in that lead magnet, right? In your case, it's reversing the effects of aging. And so if it's in, in if that's what it is, it can't change. Otherwise they're going to leave. And that's why, you know, for folks who are really resistant to defining a niche, right? They're saying, oh, I'm a health and wellness coach. I'm going to help everybody be healthier. Like I can do it all. Um, people don't know that they need to be healthier. They have a specific problem. Like, man, my back hurts and I feel like it's because I'm getting older. And well, I'm going to go try to find somebody that deal specifically with that. And yeah, Taylor, if I could just piggyback on what you're saying yeah. there. Um, and, and I thought that early on too, you know, and, and I did, you know, I kind of tried to work with people who were like me when I went through my journey, but I was broad in how I defined myself. And again, I can't, I said this earlier, but I can't emphasize enough. You need to find a niche and, it, you know, there is some truth to the more, more, narrow your niches, the dollars actually get bigger. Because if you can really speak to someone's real pain points, they will pay for it. Yeah. And if you're, and again, health coach, when, when I, and I'm not trying to poo poo on anyone here, take, take it from me, who's, you know, someone who's been in, in, in the game a little bit longer, probably than some of you is when somebody says, oh, I'm a health and wellness coach. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. I have no idea what that means. Because yep. everyone is, you know, and people are like, oh, does that mean you're a personal trainer? Does that mean you do this? Like, what is it? No, you're like, you're not a health and wellness coach. I help people do X. I help person Y do X. Yep. That's your messaging, whatever that is for you. Yep. yep. And I think it's really great for those who are listening that may not have that yet. Look at your own experience, because it's likely that the stuff that you learned overcoming your own challenges are going to point you to the problems that you know so intimately that you're going to be able to help somebody else resolve. And it's, you know, if you helped yourself overcome whatever that challenge is, guaranteed you can help somebody else. You just got to be able to articulate that. Yeah. I'd, I'd also say, don't be afraid to change though. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying be wishy-washy one day, Tuesday, I'm this and Thursday, I'm that, or this is the person I'm talking to. So I'm now, now I'm this. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about go with what your zone of genius is. But don't be afraid as you evolve and the type of people you work or who come who come are attracted to you evolves to change it. Yep. What I do now, reversing the effects of aging, is different than when I first started. I was just weight loss and back pain. But I evolved as a person and people came to me because they were drawn to me. And then I crafted a new messaging and new program based on that. But it's really yep. based on what I wanted for my own in my own life. So Yep, definitely. Yeah. And as you get certified and have those experiences helping people and do your own research and you level up as a coach, then you have that opportunity. And I think it's a really important point to make because I hear so much that people are saying, oh, I, I can't be a health and wellness coach because there's just so many coaches out there. There's, it's just oversaturated. How am I ever going to stand out? And people, what we're talking about right now is how you stand out. You get specific and you're not a health and wellness coach, 
you help people with blank, right? And once you define that specific problem, then all of a sudden that oversaturation mentality is wiped out because there really aren't that many coaches in the world versus the amount of people who need the resolution to the problem that you specifically are solving. Yeah, let me, Taylor, let me pick back on that. So in a sense, you're absolutely right, exactly what you just said. There's more people who need help than there are coaches. That being said, and I, I think anyone who's watching this is not in this camp. But there's a lot of people who call themselves coaches. Maybe they even have a certification or two and they're just dabbling and they got their full-time gig or their, their main job or what, what have you. I think the difference is, and it's fine if you're going to start as a side hustle or whatever before you move into that, that's totally fine. But I think the difference is, is people ask for help. You know, you're watching this video, you're part of this community, you're obviously committed, you know, and, and, and there's others and, and et cetera, but like ask for help. I was too stubborn. I thought I knew it all too early on. And it wasn't until I actually started to ask for help. Now it took me my third coach that really took my game up. I had to, it took me three people before I found the right person who jived with me and his message and our personality and everything like that. But you have to be, it wasn't until I got over my own stubbornness and decided to like ask for help and, and pay for help that things really started to move for me. So if that's not on the budget right off the bat, that's fine, but there's a lot of free resources. There's community like this one, but you know, don't think you know it all because you have like one or two certifications. There's a lot to the industry. So that's what separates I'm a health and wellness coach to I'm a health and wellness coach that actually makes money. There's a big <laughs> difference there. Yeah, there is. I couldn't agree with you more. It's all about learning from people who have done it before, who have seen the corners that you're approaching that you don't even know exist because it's it's a uh, a lot easier to avoid mistakes when somebody's telling you that the mistake is headed your way. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I've gotten pretty decent now, uh, see, you know, meeting a lot of people with their offering, et cetera. When somebody, you know, gives me their, I do the five steps to blah, 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 for so and so it's like, mm, I don't know. I don't think that works. Or it might work. Like you're, I'm not saying your program doesn't work, but your marketing and your tagline, like if, if a simple guy like me who can't, can't understand what you're saying, I'm sorry, most people aren't probably not going. So I've gotten pretty good at sort of like find, you know, kind of hearing that out on people as well. Just like, I think you might want to change that. Yeah, definitely. So for the folks who are listening, who are flow coaches that are considering, you know, working with you or with mentors, I guess for you specifically, what do you feel like you can help them most with? Yeah, that's a great question. I, th I think a couple things, you know, one, here's some landmines, you know, like I've already, I've already stepped on them. So like, don't, don't make the same mistakes I made. And have I done everything in the industry? No. Um, so, but you know, certainly the mistakes I've made, the things I've learned, but even just like coaching you through, like, that's like, whatever your needs, these, you know, we're all health coaches here. Um, and maybe some people have some other certifications, you know, I, I also do executive coaching, business coaching as well, but you know, just sometimes having that sounding board, to provide to people. It's like, well, have you really thought that through? Or like, like I mentioned just a minute ago, it's like, I don't know if that wording or your phrasing is going to resonate with how you think it is. And you might want to change things around a little bit and that sort of thing. So yeah, you know, just being, uh, being, being a sounding board, being a coach and, uh, and then also, you know, don't do what, uh, what I've done. And uh, I guess the other thing I'd just say is like, I, again, I put a lot of emphasis into my own personal development going to networking events, going to conferences, meeting other coaches who are, you know, magnitudes more successful than me uh, as well and uh, learning from them. So that's something I can also pass along. I might not have done what X person has done yet, but at least I know about it because I've talked to them. So there's, I can give some insight in that regard as well. And maybe that's right for you. Maybe it's not. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's awesome, Deepak. Thank you for sharing. And yeah, coaches who are listening, Deepak will be available to help you as you uh, become and a, a more successful health coach that makes money, right? That's because at the end of the day, we, we do want that. We are here and in it because we share this passion and purpose for making a difference for people. But it's pretty dang awesome when we're able to feed our families and you know live the lifestyle of freedom and have the time back as we're able to uh, achieve the financial goals that we're seeking as well. Absolutely. Taylor, can I just say one more thing? And I, I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's some people in the community that are going to see this that are like this. There's, And I come across uh, people like this in my own circle as well, or maybe they it, it define themselves as more like 
intuitive or healers. And a lot of time, and I'm not trying to paint with a broad brush, a lot of time people like this have this resistance to asking for what they're worth, their time, and they're like, I want to help people. Listen, folks, we all want to help people. That's why we got into this. You can help more people in your community, in your niche, when you are successful. If you're struggling because you're not charging your worth, you're not even asking for money, or you're not defined, you're, you're haphazard with what you're doing with your coaching, you're actually not helping. Not only you're not helping yourself and your family, you're not actually helping the world that needs your zone of genius. So you help more people when you're actually more successful. And there, of course, there's a lot of things that go into that. And one of it is asking for your worth. Yeah, couldn't agree more. We could have a whole nother conversation on that one. Yeah, for sure. Well, Deepak, it's been awesome to have you on the show. To close up, definitely want to give you the mic to share a little bit what you about what you've got coming up in your own business that has you excited over the next three to six months. Let us into the the world. Um, that you're- Ab- absolutely, you know, and, and and Taylor, I don't think I've shared this with you even yet. So this is kind of like uh, for this audience, uh, this community, uh, brand new. I've actually just started a podcast, so I'm really excited about that. Started recording episodes. We're we're gonna do some batch batch recording there. Uh, people of all sorts. So it's not it's not a health related. Or, or aging related podcast. I'm talking to interesting people from uh, have interesting stories from all walks of life. Actually, just earlier today, I uh, had a conversation with, with somebody who's an ex CIA agent. So I'm looking very forward to having that conversation with them. And then the second thing I'll just tease uh, is I'm actually, and this one is health related, I'm hosting my own summit in December. So, you know, people, uh, you know, connect with whether, whether we choose to work uh, as Flowell uh, mentors and mentees, you know, Definitely connect with me on social or what have you. Uh, and then you'll know when my running my health summit on aging uh, later in the year. Wow, super exciting. How can folks best connect with you? Yeah, the best uh, I would say is uh, probably my biggest plot. I- I'm on most most of the socials, uh, except I'm not on TikTok. Sorry, folks, just it's not my jam. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, where have you. I'm sure we'll put the links in there. Uh, reach out to me, just say hi, connect with me here in, in this community. However, happy to have a conversation. I'm always willing to lend a hand to someone, you know, who's uh, willing to learn and is open to, you know, expanding themselves. Uh, if, 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 if you're that type of person, I'm happy to have a conversation. With you. Amazing. Yep. And Deepak's handle for those listening is DSaney Health. So check him out on uh, on the different social platforms. Check out that podcast. Visit the website and certainly come to Flowell and book some time with him so that you can take your business to the next level. Deepak has been awesome. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate the time today. And I'm looking forward to meeting a, a bunch of you in the community. All right, folks. This has been another episode of the Success with Flowell show. If you are a health coach who is newly starting their business or is just hitting a plateau and can't break through to get to that next level, give us a shout. We'd love to have a conversation about how our community of successful health coaches can help you find your path to success, just like Deepak and so many of the other community members have found with the help of Flowell. Until next time, see you soon.